skirt together. See you there. 2024 isn't just about the presidential race. It's about the critical local elections shaping Georgia and DeKalb County's future. Join New Birth, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and WSB-TV on April 18th for DeKalb Matters, a future-focused conversation. This pivotal debate will feature DeKalb County CEO candidates Steve Bradshaw, Lorraine Cochran Johnson, and Larry Johnson, addressing your concerns on taxes, education, crime, and economic development. Be part of this live audience at our NPR studio or tune in on WSB TV and AJC.com. Reserve your spot now on our website. Remember, your vote is your voice. Let's use it wisely. Mark your calendars for April 21st, New Birth. It's Show Me a Sign Sunday, where we'll all bring our pledges to sow into the beautification of our campus. Additionally, Dr. Bryant encourages everyone to gather your jars, bottles, and banks filled with loose change and bring them along. Let's invest together in the beauty and future of our spiritual home. See you there with your pledges and your change, ready to make a change. College students, register today for our New Birth Intern Program. We are seeking young leaders who desire to grow their interest and understanding by working behind the scenes of ministry. Dependent upon the type of internship you're interested in, we offer a broad or concentrated exposure to ministry. You will work with some of our best leaders in ministry while experiencing a team environment that encourages spiritual, personal, and professional growth. Register today. Attention students, New Birth is excited to announce that our scholarship applications for 2024 are now open from January 14th through April 22nd. After awarding $100,000 in scholarships to 32 graduates in 2023, we're committed to continuing our support for academic excellence. This is your chance to join the ranks of New Birth scholars who have attended prestigious universities like Morehouse, FAMU, Howard, Tuskegee, and more. Don't miss this opportunity to receive financial support for your college journey. Apply now at newbirth.org forward slash events. New Birth Family, let's come together for our Goodwill Clothing Drive on Saturday, April 27th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and on Sunday, April 28th at 11.30 a.m. We'll be gathering in the New Birth parking lot. This is a wonderful opportunity to declutter and donate, helping those in need while embodying the spirit of giving. Your contributions make a real difference. Join us on May 4th at 12 p.m. for a momentous occasion. The groundbreaking ceremony of our innovative mini home community, the Benison. I knew with over 250 acres, God got something else in mind. We have allocated 33 acres on our property, breaking ground on 150 mini houses right on our campus. Oh, come on, y'all ain't shouting right. What's up, family? I am Broderick McBride, the Director for Emerging Generations here at New Birth Cathedral. Parents, I have some exciting news for you. Catapult Summer Academy 2024 is underway. If you have a child between the ages of 5 and 12 years of age and you are looking to find them something to do this summer, this is the summer experience you want to sign them up for. Parents, go over to our website now, fill out the interest form, and we will be following up with you first regarding our application process. We want to see you there. Take care. To all of our first time visitors, welcome. We hope you have an amazing time with us today. Remember, here at New Birth, our vision is simple. Equip, empower, engage. See, see you, you next week. week. Well, praise the Lord, New Birth. I don't know about you, but I was glad when the Lord said unto me, let us go into the house and praise his name. Kelly, I don't know about you, but I am glad to be in this house. And we are so glad to have you in this house as well and our internet family. Listen, we pray that you are equipped with greatness and power from this wonderful service today. And we pray that you engage with us and have a great time in the name of the Lord. Great morning, New Birth family. Great morning, New Birth family. 
I'm Kelly Gorham, and I'm so excited to be a part of what we're doing here. I wanted to let you know that for those of you that pre-registered, we are having baptisms. Can we get excited? We are bringing more to the body of Christ. We've got more family to love on. And speaking of family to love on, it just would not be appropriate if we didn't take a moment to capture it. So everybody grab your cameras on your phones. Let's get to it. It's time for an Ussy. Come on now, you know how we do it. Let's go ahead and take one. There we go. Get it. All right. Did you all get it? So for those of our families that are here for baptism, after service, we want you to go ahead and make sure you take some ussies right there in the lobby. And listen, I need you to use hashtag new birth now. Say that with me, family. Hashtag new birth now. Amen. Be great as you equip, empower, and engage the culture. your hands if you believe it's going to get better for you. You all don't sound excited about it. I said clap like your whole life is about to get better. Come on, clap like your finances are going to get better. I want you to clap like your health is going to get better. Would you make some noise if you want better for your children and better for your grandchildren and better for your destiny? Somebody shout out loud, better. Isn't that amazing? It's a one-word declaration that's also a prophecy. Uh, that when it is that I am speaking it out loud, I'm not just declaring it over me, but I am declaring it uh, for everybody in whom I am aiming it towards. Uh, while you're yet standing, I want you to just find three people. Find three people. I want you to embrace them firmly and just speak better over them. Come on, everybody. I want you to move from where you are. Embrace three people. We want better for your family. We want better for your future. We want better for your finances. 
At New Birth, we want to be a better church. Hallelujah. Clap your hands if you're excited. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Of the evidence of a thriving church, the evidence of a healthy church, the evidence of a church that has a future is a church that has children in it. Uh, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, blessing, dedicating, and consecrating 13 babies back to the glory of our God. Come on, I can't hear anybody. I said, open up your mouth. I'm excited about what is getting ready to take place. And so uh, today, uh, we're going to pray over them. We're going to consecrate them. We do not do it in private. Uh, we do not do it in the pastor's office. We don't go to people's homes and do it uh, in their living room. We do it in the church because we are one family and we're one community. Um, the African proverb is right. It takes a village to raise a child. Uh, and so by you being here on today, you are a stakeholder and a participant in the future of these babies. I need you, if you are excited about their future and you're going to pray for them, would you give God glory for them even now? Uh, pastors are uh, coming to uh, assist me, uh, but here's what I need for you to do is to know that this is a season of intercession. It's a season of prayer. We're going to speak these babies' names aloud, uh, and after doing so, I'm going to lift them up to uh, the glory of God, but I'm going to ask with intentionality uh, that you are going to be praying for these children. Uh, praying for them. Th this is an easy prayer. Uh, pray that these uh, children don't grow up to be like the teenagers you had to deal with. Amen. Uh, that, that God will uh, break that spirit of rebellion off of them now. Uh, that none of these babies is going to break curfew. Come on, none of them are going to sneak out of the house. Uh, Y'all ain't clapping good. You got, we got to pray now. They not bringing people in the house while you at work. Amen. Uh, but we're, we're praying for them that their future is already fixed and God is going to do something uh, amazing uh, in their lives. Help us, Pastor Stokes. Navy Lyric Champion. Say it again for me. Navy Lyric Champion. Come on, Champion. I got it. She got the hat so I don't get confused. If, I can, if you can unloosen the hat just a little bit for me. She's like, you messing my do up. I got it. We consecrate you to the glory of God that you will live up to your name, that you will be a champion in everything that you go after. Second place will never be affixed to your assignment, uh, but that God is going to make you the head and not the tail. And those of you who know, you are looking at a champion. Will you give God glory for it even right now? God bless you. Absolutely. Come on now. We done talked in the back. Let's... Charles Lamont Burgess Jr. Charles. That's the third. Yes, sir. That's the third. I'm not sure. Charles Lamont Burgess the third. Charles Lamont Burgess the third. Yes. We consecrate you, Charles, to the glory of our God, that God will make you a leader and not a follower, that he'll make you the head and not the tail, that you will be above and not beneath. I pray that God will exceed the expectation that the third will, in fact, set a new pace for your family. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Yes. Come on, Bo Ritz. This is Jazira Cameron. Jazira? Mm -hmm. Jazira Cameron. Cameron, thank you. Zyra, I consecrate you as a world-class influencer. Uh, just like the women in South Carolina, you won't know what it means to lose. Everything that you are supposed to do, you will be more than a conqueror, the head of the class. I speak scholarships over your life. Open doors and internships and mentors are going to always be yours. May you be the greatest woman who has ever birthed into your family. And those of you that believe it, say amen. amen. God bless you. Kaina Carter. Kaya? Ka Kaina Carter. Kaina yes. Carter. 
I got it. Come on, Kaina. Let's be friends. Thank you. Okay, it's almost over, Kaina. Look at him. He right there. I consecrate you, Kaina Carter, that God is going to give you the grace of Ruth, that you are going to have the steadfastness of Mary, uh, that God is going to make you the 13th apostle, that you are going to represent him in foreign territory and do what you didn't even know was possible. May you be a record breaker, a world changer, and an international influencer. And those of you that believe it, shout amen. amen. Don't you look at me like that. <laughs> Thank you. Her name is Winter Webb. Winter Webb. Webb? Yes, sir. Yes. Come on, Winter Webb. Look at this chocolate. Winter Webb. We consecrate you to the glory of God that weeping for you will never go past one night. Uh, but joy will meet you every day. I pray that you'll have a life with no anxiety, no worry, no stress, no depression, no overthinking, but that the joy of the Lord will always be your strength. And those of you that believe it, will you shout amen, amen. and thank God. God bless you. Beautiful. Yes. You coming? Thank you. Aaron Noel Robinson Jones. Aaron Noel, Noel Robinson, Robinson Jones. Jones. Thank you. She taking a deep breath like this is serious. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going underwater today. We consecrate you to the glory of our God. God knew you while you were in your mother's womb. May you never feel trapped. May you never feel secluded. May you never feel abandoned. May you never feel rejected. May you for your entire life know you were chosen uh, to be the cornerstone of the universe. That God is going to make your name great. And women are going to call your name from around the world. That you are a leader of world class order. In Jesus name, amen. She's like, you talking about me? God bless you. Yes. Okay. His name is Amir Josiah Latson. Amir Josiah Latson? Yes. I consecrate you that you will, in fact, be one of God's greatest <laughs> gifts in the earth. That God will use you in a remarkable and unusual way. That you will be a game changer. That you are going to fight the system and go against everything that everybody expects. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, and he's still mad. I'm gone. <laughs> Zamir Hilton. Yes. They're twins? Yes, sir. Z Zamir? Yes. And Zahir Hilton. Zamir and Zahir. Yes, sir. I got it. Zamir and Zahir. I got twins too. Yes. I speak a double portion of Nona. Of that God will do something. There is power when two come together in agreement. I pray that God will make you Paul and Silas. That as long as you all are together, there will be nothing in this earth that will be able to hold you back. May God anoint you to set other people free. To be a credit to the race. To be a liberator for our people to be a voice for the voices, to be a leader for those who cannot find their way. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Kaya Marley Farnham. Say it again for me. And Kayla Milan Farnham. Tell me her name. Kaya Milan. Kaya, Kaya, Kaya Marley Farnham. Kaya Marley. Yes. And say the last name for me. Farnham. Farnham. Yes. I got it. Kyle, we consecrate you to the glory of God. May you never know lack. May you never know insufficiency. Uh, may you never be put in a position to have to ask. May it be given to you. May your gift make room for you. May your name be circulated amongst influential people for the rest of your life. May sickness never enter your body. May you never spend the night at the hospital unless you are a doctor. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Okay. 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 She said, I ain't letting this word go. Uh-uh. Yes. You don't come to me for one minute. You can go right back to dad. So this Thank is- you. Oh, we're going to be friends. Uh, yes. Kayla Milan Farnham. Kayla Milan Farnham. 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 Yeah. God always saves the best for last. Uh, may God impregnate your mind with uncanny ideas, with unusual perceptions, with vivid, vivid dreams. May God uh, bless your imagination. May God give you out-of-the-box concepts. May all of your artistry be put on the stage for the world to be able to see. Here is a genius woman that changed the fabric and the narrative of black people around the world. If you believe it, will you give God glory for her? Bless you, beautiful family. I want to uh, ask uh, Jonathan before uh, we move forward, if there are those of you who are in the room who are presently expecting, I want you to come to the altar. If you are presently expecting, I want you to come to the altar. Or those of you who are praying, if you're praying for children, I want you to come to the altar. Those of you who are expecting or those of you who are praying for children, I want you to come to the altar. I want to pray for you very quickly, uh, wherever it is that you are. If you are expecting or you are praying for children, I want you to come to the altar uh, right where you are. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Mama, you praying not to have children, you? Huh? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 let's, yeah. I'm praying for those who want to have children. Now, you go on back. Come on now, Sarah, I need, I, Sarah, you go on back. Abraham is retired, I, You go on back now, thank you. God can do anything, amen. Bless the Lord. We serve a prayer. <laughs> we, we, hey, won't he do it? Listen, I, I want you. How many of you know God can do absolutely anything? God can do absolutely anything. I want to, those of you who are uh, praying for children, if you'll just lay your hand on your womb right where it is that you are. I'm praying that God is uh, getting ready to move. Pastor Stokes, Pastor Turner, if you'll help me very quickly. I- I'm praying that God is going to do something in confirmation uh, before Thanksgiving gets here. I, I need mothers, uh, listen to me, uh, mothers who had, uh, down, on this, down on the floor for me, uh, mothers who had difficulty in labor, difficulty carrying, I need you standing uh, right where it is that you are. Mothers who have survived miscarriages, I need you to stand uh, right where you are. Those of you uh, who the doctors didn't give you a good prognosis, but God prevailed, uh, I need you to stand right now. We are a church that believes in prayer. And we know that God can do anything but fail. Hallelujah. I need to change that sound. I need the sound of prayer uh, for me right through there, please. Uh, Listen to me. When uh, I was six months old, they found a a fallopian tube was around my neck. And uh, uh, the doctors told my mother the only way she was going to survive is that she needed to abort me. Uh, My mother jumped off of the table, went down to the end of the hallway, called my grandmother from a cell phone, from a pay phone, and my grandmother said, get out of that hospital. Uh, There's another doctor that is in charge, and he can do what no other power can do. I stand before you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I stand before you because I had a praying grandmother that knew I don't care what that doctor says. I don't care what the specialist believes, but there is a name that is above every name. And at his name, every knee shall bow. And every tongue must confess 
I, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Stokes, Pastor Turner, are getting ready to go through and are getting ready to anoint these mothers. Uh, but I, what I want is great grandmothers to come to the altar uh, and stand behind these young mothers. Great grandmothers, if you're in this room, I want you to come stand behind them. Great grandmothers, come on, fight your way to that aisle. Great grandmothers. I need you moving right in. Come on, great grandmothers. Because you done seen God do it. You done seen God do it. Hallelujah. Great grandmothers, lay your hands on the shoulders of these mothers. Hallelujah. You got to transfer that maternal instinct. Transfer that maternal wisdom, that maternal insight. You got three generations of praying for children in your womb. Hallelujah. Come on, where are you? New birth, I need you to stretch your right hand to faith. Hallelujah. Stretch your right hand to faith. Pastor Stokes, Pastor Turner, I want you laying hands, praying for them. But even as they're praying, I want to hear the whole church in prayer. Come on, open up your mouth. We believe God is able. We believe that God can. We believe that God will. We believe that there's nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that God can do it? How many of you believe God can do it? Come on, begin praying for them. God, we need your power. We need your strength. We need a breakthrough to happen. God, we need you to do what the doctor can't see. Wherever there's a blockage, open it up. Thank you, dear Lord. Every prophet that was born in the Old Testament was born to a woman that doctors thought was barren. But God, we need you to open it up right now. God, we know you are a prayer answering God. We know that in you there is no failure that you can exceed our expectations, that you can do what we can't do for ourselves.
prophetic shout. I don't know if y'all heard me. I don't know if you heard me. But for 30 seconds, can you just give the Lord a prophetic shout? Uh-oh. It's, it's a shift in here. Firm foundation. I feel a shift in the building. I said, give him a prophetic shout for 30 seconds. Come on, open up your mouth and shout. Can you just do me a favor? Can you just go to seven people and complete it and say, he's doing it now. 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 Go to him. Get out your seat. Tell him he's doing it now. Firm foundation. He's doing it now. 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 We stand on your word. We stand on your word. Your word can't fail. His word won't God is not a man that he should be. Not the son of man that he should be. If he said it, he's going to do it. Hey. If he said it, he's going to do it. I don't know. That just came up for me. Hey. If he said it, he's going to do it. I dare you to prophesy. Say he be said, he's gonna do it. Somebody lift your voice. If he said it, he's gonna do it. If he said it, he's gonna do it. Hey, somebody lift up your words. Christ is our firm. Say it together. Christ is our firm foundation. The rock, come on, say it. The rock on which I stand. With everything around. I've never been more glad. I've never been more glad. Come on. Because I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? So why would he fail now? I've got good news. He won't.
You got to just know that. He won't fail. Pastor, I think I'm going to age myself right here, but my daddy would just sing something like this. Without him, I would be nothing. Without him, I would fail. I'm looking for some saints. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship. Without a sail. Can we just have some Sunday morning church? Without him, I would be nothing. I feel something happening in my shop. Without glory to God, him I and I will see you with the Somebody say, without him I would be drifting. Without a say. Now can we just lift up worship in this place? Can we lift up praise in this moment? With Jesus on my side, things will work out fine. We're gonna make it. You gotta encourage yourself and just say, "Come on, we're gonna make it." With Jesus on my side, somebody raise that praise. Say it real big, say it. With Jesus on my side. He's the firm foundation, say it. Things will work. somebody. I need you to grab somebody because something is breaking in here. And I want you to prophesy over them. Tell them, with Jesus on our side, say it. With Jesus on our side. I feel something happening things we
will make it. My mind is made up. My mind is made up. My declaration is, I will. I will. I will. I will. That's my declaration. I will. I dare you to just point at somebody and tell them you gonna make it. You ain't gonna quit. You ain't gonna die. You ain't gonna lose. You gotta make it. No weapon. You may be seated. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. Lay hands on yourself and say, I gotta make it. I gotta make it. You may be seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I dare you to just spread that word down your road. And just tell everybody on your road, we all going to make it. Bless his name. Hallelujah. You may be seated. My grandmother would say, if you can't say nothing, just wave your hand. The road is rough and the going and the hills hard to climb. Come on. I start a long time. In my mind, I to make Jesus my show. Come on, one more time, everybody, let me hear you. The road is rough. The road. Clap your hands right there. 
Nobody said the road was gonna be easy, but I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave us now. If you're gonna make a commitment not to quit, but you're gonna fight your way through it, would you give God a praise right there? Come on, come on. I don't want my children to see me quit. I don't want my enemies to see me quit. I gotta fight my way through it. For that I give God glory. You may be seated uh, in uh, the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I just can't give up now. Hallelujah. I just can't give up now. Hallelujah. I just can't give up now. Hallelujah. I am uh, thankful that God has brought us through another week's journey, uh, that he's uh, protected us from all the evil, from danger seen and unseen. I need you real quick. Can we just slip into a testimony service? Uh, would you tell your neighbor one thing God did for you this week? One thing uh, that God did for you this week. Amen. If you can't get high on your own supply, uh, come on, shout over your own testimony about what God What God has done for you, what God has uh, done uh, for your life, has done for uh, your family. I want you, uh, if you will, if you'll give your attention to the screen uh, for just one moment. Give your attention to the screen for just one moment, please, sir, please, ma'am. Over 20 years ago, we moved onto this campus excited about what God has done, a multi-million dollar facility and edifice to the glory of our God. 24 years later, we're standing strong, but our signs are not. This don't even match who it is that we are or what it is that they're supposed to look like. I want to change all of the signs on the campus, and I need your help. We are a Ritz-Carlton ministry with Rev Root in signs. And all of these all over the campus, over 40 of them, need to be replaced, need to be repainted, and need to be restored. I need you to partner with us. I need you to take this as the name of our campaign, Show Me a Sign. With giving tiers from $100 to $5,000, we ask that you pray for guidance on your contribution level. David asked of himself, how can I live in a cedar home when God's glory is living under a tent? This is beneath who it is that we know God to be and who it is that we see ourselves to be as his children. We need a sign. Let's unite on April 21st to raise $250,000 honoring the land entrusted to us by the Lord. Together as we do, we anticipate the signs and wonders God will reveal in our midst. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Uh, next Sunday, we're stepping out in outlandish faith on uh, next Sunday uh, to repair all of the signs around our campus uh, is uh, going to place us in the orbit of $250,000. Uh, we need to uh, restore and replace all of those signs as well as uh, we need to uh, uh, restore and replace all of the signage around uh, our vehicles, our buses, and our vans uh, so that uh, when people come onto our campus or see our signage, they'll know that this is a, uh, a church that exudes and exemplifies uh, the lavish splendor of who our God is. How many of you believe God does everything in excellence? He does everything uh, in excellence. And so I am stretching your faith in this season. We are endeavoring on next Sunday, not through some capital campaign or long uh, stretching uh, momentum, uh, but in one Sunday, I want to be able to raise $250,000 above our tithes, $250,000 above our tithes. Uh, if you'll put the uh, pledges on the uh, screen for me, please. Our servant leaders, they're moving amongst you. If you are absent of a covenant pledge commitment form, would you lift up your hand? We don't want you robbed of the opportunity. Uh, on next Sunday, we're asking you to do it. Uh, I've asked uh, every member, those of you who got a jar of uh, 
coins in your house. Would you lift up your hand? You got a jar of coins somewhere in your house. Come on, you showing your age right there. Amen. I don't care if it's a mason jar or an old uh, uh, gallon of uh, water uh, bottle, uh, but all of those coins, I want you to bring those to church on uh, next Sunday. Those of you who are online, I need you to go over and above in your sharing, in your sowing, and in your investing uh, in uh, the things of God. I remember years ago, uh, Mel Gibson, the famed actor, was endeavoring to produce a film called The Passion of the Christ. Uh, he went to seven different movie houses looking uh, for investors, and all of them told him no, that there's no way that a movie about Jesus is ever going to make budget. Uh, at the end of the day, because he felt called to do it, uh, he invested $23 million. Here's where you got to just pause right there. $23 million of his own money. Y'all just missed what I just said. He had $23 million of his own money and then invested it in it. Uh, that film, The Passion of the Christ, uh, went on to earn over $475 million. Here it is, because nobody else would invest in seeing Jesus. I, I wonder what it is that you're going to be able to see after making a sacrifice, making an investment. It is not just about physical signs, but seeing a sign uh, that God is still moving. The reason why we're shouting today is because God always gives us signs and wonders. He gives us evidence that he is with us. When the storm was over, he gave a sign through a rainbow. When Jesus was baptized, he gave a sign and announced, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. When Mary was giving birth, he gave a sign with a star in the east. How many of you need God to show you a sign? You on the right track. Uh, for God to give you a sign that something amazing uh, is getting ready to happen. And so whether you are pledging a seed of 5,000 as I am going to do, I always want to lead by example or 1,000, or whether you're going to give a seed of 500, again, I've got to underscore this, this is above our tithes. This is above our offerings. But I want us uh, to uh, give a demonstration to God that God can trust us with a sign. Y'all hear what I just said? That God can trust us uh, with a sign. And I wanted uh, God uh, to show me a sign. Come on, Benny. I want to introduce you uh, to a remarkable young man uh, who came to this church since uh, I've been uh, the pastor here. And I wanted him to just uh, share uh, his testimony. I know he looked like a football player. He just eats. You know, just, uh, but he ain't, he ain't playing nothing here. Amen. But this is... Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, that's my little brother. Uh, Benny, I want you to uh, share your testimony about moving here from Texas uh, four years ago. Yeah. First of all, good morning, New Birth. Uh, ben Calhoun. Uh, I moved to Atlanta in 2019, uh, right out of high school. Um, probably about eight months out of high school, I came to Atlanta in the hopes of being an entrepreneur. Um, in that, when my first year of moving here, um, I, I ended up opening an insurance agency, uh, becoming the youngest person to ever open an insurance agency in the country. Um, I, I got to pause because I need y'all to turn that mic up because y'all didn't hear what he just said. He moved here eight months out of high school, eight months out of high school, I picked himself up and moved to Atlanta. He is the youngest insurance agency owner in America. Uh, and is a member of New Birth. Y'all got to give God glory for that. And uh, the reason why y'all got to shout about it has not gone to college, but has favor on his life. Uh, that is absolutely un. Uh, believable. You just did something uh, recently uh, in uh, a multi-million dollar deal. I want you to talk to them about so, that. Okay. So, uh, upon me opening uh, in 2020 at the end of COVID, um, the company I was with made changes and I ended up shutting down. Um, so, two years, I didn't have an income in Atlanta. Um, I was just really going off of faith. Um, and then towards the middle of 2022, um, my mentor, Ben Raymond, called me and he, had a, uh, he said he found a deal for me in Atlanta. Um, did not think I was going to get approved. Um, only 10% of the people that go through this loan company in this company uh, get approved. Um, so 
go through the process of it uh, about probably towards the top of 2023, I'm approved. Uh, I go through three loan companies. Um, one loan company told me, yeah. Um, and then maybe four days before I was supposed to open, the loan, com the loan company told me no. So I'm trying to figure out where am I gonna find a $1.5 million loan in four days at the age of 2023. 20, uh, um, so <laughs> I called Ben, and I know he's probably tired of me calling him at that point, because I've called him probably the whole time. Um, and then he said, I may have one company. Um, I'm going to let you go and see if they can approve you. Um, I called the guy. Um, we speak Thursday. Um, he said, I got your file. I'll talk to you Monday. Uh, I go to church that Sunday. Um, I end up tithing more than I've ever tithed in my life, hoping not for average, but for better. Um, and so I get a call Thursday that week. He calls me. He says, hey, Ben, we've approved you for your loan of $1.5 million. Um, If y'all don't shout over that, I'm, at 23, I was trying to eat. Amen. 1.5 million, and I don't want you to miss uh, that he tithes at 23 years of age by himself uh, and is trusting God for supernatural signs and wonders. I want you to tell the people why you tithe. If you'll tell them why you tithe, please. Uh, so I tithe because my mom taught me when I was probably around five years old that I need to give because the Bible says you're supposed to give 10% of your annual income to God. Um, and so at five years old, she would give me five, 10 bucks and sow my seed. Um, and so as I got older and tithed, I would see different things, different doors opening, different resources coming to me. And so I'm like, okay, if I tithe 10% and he give me this, if I tithe a little bit more than that, what could happen? And so I started tithing more um, and I never did 10%. And so from probably 20, since I was 22 years old, I've never tithed 10%. I've always done 15% because I don't Say expect- Say you went too fast. Say that again. Uh, I tithed 15%. You tithe 15%. Now I, now I tithe 15%. You don't tithe 10%. No, I do not. Because I don't expect average, I expect more than average. Einstein said the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. How many of you want something different uh, to happen in your life. I, I want to every entrepreneur, every entrepreneur, would you raise that hand for me, please? Every entrepreneur, uh, raise that hand. I am praying that God is getting ready to show you a sign that he's going to bless your business, give you a sign that he's going to bless your enterprise. He's going to give you a sign that he is with you when the odds are stacked up against you. 10% is the bare minimum, but when you trust God for the unusual and the extraordinary, let me say this for lifted hands, for lifted hands, those of you online, lifted hands, the same oil that's on this young man, I speak multi-million dollar contracts, multi-million dollar business opportunities, multi-million dollar favor is getting ready to hit your life. But he's only going to do it for people that he trusts will be conduits to the kingdom of God. Would you give this young man a big hand? Thank you so much, Ben. Come on, you can do better than that. How many of you believe same grace, same grace, same grace is going to happen for you? We're going to move to our tithing at the end of our service. I want to jump just straight into the Word of God. Uh, God has given me something for today, and I want you to be able to receive it. Uh, let's set the atmosphere for what God is going to do. Uh, for just 10 seconds, would you lift that hand? If you got to stand, do that. If you need to remain seated, do that. Uh, but I want your mind decluttered from everything you've been carrying when you walked in the room. I want there to be a singular of purpose. I don't want to see nobody else. I don't want to hear from nobody else. I need to hear what God has for me in this stage, in this season of my life. With that hand lifted, would you open up your mouth and just begin to bless him? I begin to thank him, begin to glorify him. Come on, magnify him. Come on, lift him up. Exalt his name, extol him. Come on, bless him from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's got something that he wants to say to you, and I want you to be a part of it. Come on, can you stand up on your feet all over the sanctuary? Hallelujah. And allow the Lord to fill you again right in this moment. Come on, that's it. 
Father, we're your vessels. Fill us again. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. You provide fire. And I'll provide the sacrifice. You pour out your spirit. I will open up your side. If you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. I will open up inside. Fill me up, oh God. Fill me up, oh God. Fill me up, oh God. Fill me up. Fill me up, oh God. Fill me up.
by the hand, take that neighbor by the hand, stretch out even across the aisles. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your I'll say pray that you'll bless the person whose hands I'm holding. I pray that their hand will open new doors this week. I pray that this hand will pull down strongholds. Pray that this hand will push back the devourer. I pray this hand will receive the biggest blessing of their life. I pray, dear Lord, for the person whose hands I'm holding, that for the rest of this year, they'll never be found empty-handed. Everything that they need to survive, to thrive, and to overcome will be dropped right into their hands. Thank you, dear Lord, that this is not a season for losing, but this is now their season for gaining. And I trust it to be so in Jesus' name. Would you loose that hand and give God glory for what's about to drop in your hand? Come on, I said thank him for what's getting ready to drop into your hand. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Janae. Thank you, music ministry, uh, for leading us in worship. It feel good in here today. Amen. I'm mighty glad about it. I'm mighty glad about it. I was glad when they said unto me, uh, let's go into uh, the house of uh, the Lord. Uh, we're recalibrating as uh, a church, and as a consequence, God has given us a vision to empower, to equip, to empower, and to engage. Our responsibility as a church, as I see it, as God has shared it uh, with me, is that our call is to pull people in, to pull people up, 
and to pull the power down. I want you to repeat that after me. As a church, come on, help me. Say new birth is going to pull people in, is going to pull people up, is going to pull the power down. Come on, let's say it again. I am anointed to pull people in, to pull people up, and to pull the power down. I need you to declare out loud with authority, everybody in this church is ordained to pull people in, to pull people up, and to pull the power down. If you believe it, would you give God glory for it right now? So we started this odyssey together on uh, last week that uh, you were going to be equipped. You do not come to church to be entertained, but to get the tools and the resources that you need in order to not survive, but in order to thrive. Uh, we've got to be a better church that is in tuned with what is taking place uh, within the fabric and the texture and the complexities of our congregation. Uh, as, a con as a consequence, we have uh, curated a questionnaire so that we can better serve you and better serve your family and better serve uh, our community. The QR code is coming up now on uh, all of our screens. I want you to capture it. Uh, ask that you'll uh, fill out this survey uh, immediately after service. It is uh, just so that we can better know what we need to offer, what we need to, to provide as a church. Uh, there is uh, data that suggests that uh, Christianity is shrinking in America. Uh, church growth is at an all-time low. Uh, and I want to make sure that none of those statistics will uh, fall our lot as a church. And so as a consequence, we've got to make sure that we are meeting your needs. We cannot assume or presume uh, that was what was helping you before the pandemic is effective after the pandemic. Uh, so ask that you will please scan that call even for those of you uh, who are streaming from around the world online, if you'll text NB Connect to 54244, 54244, uh, we'll send uh, this uh, brief uh, survey. It is just uh, 10 questions. Uh, it is not the SAT exam. Amen. So uh, it is not going to uh, take you a whole lot of time to do it. Ask that you'll scan it now, uh, but ask that you will fill it out uh, later uh, so that our team, our staff, our ministers, uh, and our office can uh, best uh, project how we can serve you, how it is that we can meet your needs, how we can be a better church. One of uh, my favorite books is a book uh, by Jim Collins called From Good to Great. Uh, and uh, in uh, the preamble of that book, Jim Collins argues that the enemy of greatness is goodness. As you become so good at something, you forget that greatness is an option. Uh, but I believe that God is getting ready to push us to be an even greater church uh, than what we are right now. But I need your buy-in. I need uh, to hear from you how it is that I can best serve you as pastor, how your church can best uh, facilitate uh, your growth as a believer uh, in uh, the body of Christ. How many of you love your church? If you do, would you clap your hands even now? I'm grateful. I... Uh, I feel embarrassed even saying it, realizing how old I have become. A friend of mine, uh, for over 25 years, I've known this remarkable uh, gift. He's uh, hanging out with us uh, on today. Uh, he snuck in, and we had to put him uh, to work. Uh, Pastor DeAndre Patterson, your lovely queen, would you all please stand? I am so grateful to have you with us in church. And uh, y'all remain standing. Uh, I have uh, taken uh, their son away from them. I have stolen their son, uh, who is uh, now a uh, student at Morehouse. Stand up, nephew. I love him to pieces. He's absolutely amazing. Uh, is doing uh, great things. Uh, my daughter's coming to Spelman. You got to look out for her, please. Thank you so very much. I'm, I'm, I'm depending on you. Thank you so much. Uh, Pastor and Lady Jacobs, where are you? Pastor and Lady Jacobs, won't you please stand? We are so honored uh, to have you worshiping with us. Thank you for being with us uh, on this day. Beautiful family. 
We're grateful, amen. We're grateful uh, to have uh, uh, these uh, ministerial families with us on today. Uh, last week, I uh, talked about uh, being equipped. Uh, this Sunday, I want to uh, deal with being empowered, being empowered. Would you go uh, to the second book of the Bible, Exodus chapter 18? Exodus chapter 18, would you mind standing for the reading of God's word? Exodus chapter 18. Right after Genesis, you're going to find it. Amen. <laughs> Exodus chapter 18. If you'll give me just a little bit more in the monitor, I'll live to fight another day. Exodus chapter 18. You're almost there. Amen. Exodus chapter 18. Thank you. Verses 17 and 18. Exodus 18, verses 17 and 18. Would you read silently as I read aloud? Moses' father-in-law replied, What you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You can't handle it alone. I need you to uh, read the scripture to the person beside you. Would you look at the person beside you? Don't worry about the Bible. I'm going to tell you what to say. Uh, look, look, <laughs> look at the person beside you and tell them what you are doing is not good. Look at me now. Say, if you keep doing it like that, you're going to burn yourself out. You got too much to do to do it by yourself. You may be saying, you preach good today. You preach good today. You preach good today. I, I, I want to preach for a little while this morning. I want to preach using as a subject, I can't do this by myself. I can't do this by myself. Uh, you, a lot of you just going to be freed by making that declaration. Would you shout that out loud? I can't do this by myself can't do this by myself. Not since the scandal involving Lance Armstrong have I uh, paid much attention to competitive cycling. But what I do remember, and I want you to write this down, what I do remember is uh, a principle in cycling called the echelon principle. The echelon principle. E-C-H-E-L-O-N. The echelon principle. An echelon is uh, when riders on a team form a line. Here it is. They form a line right behind each other in order to break or to cut the opposing wind. The leader who is in front of the line, the leader who is in front of the line, watch this, takes the wind so that the people behind him will not have to fight it. He takes their opposing wind for him. Ladies and gentlemen, when he becomes wearied from the blistering wind, the person who is the leader falls to the back of the line. Falls to the back of the line and the person who is second then becomes the leader. And he will take on the wind, here it is, the person who was second in line was not the leader, uh, but is taking the position of the onslaught of wind until the leader can rest. And the leader takes himself out of the line and goes to the back because he has taken the onslaught of wind for his team. When it is that the wind is coming from the side and not head on, they shift the dynamics and the line is now diagonal so that the wind does not find itself gusting anybody inordinately. They take turns endearing all of the weight and the burden of the wind. It's amazing how people can do this on wheels but can't do it walking. They don't know how to turn back or to step back or to step aside when the wind of life is too much. The winds are relentless 
And so you got to find somebody in your life, in your space, who you can trust to steer, but you have got to be humble enough to acknowledge what I have been dealing with is too much for me. I need you to hear this. Somebody need to write it down. Somebody, please, somebody, please tweet this for me. Letting go is hard when we are in a culture that celebrates holding on. Letting go is hard when we are in a culture that celebrates holding on. A delegation is dangerous when it's left to a dictator. But delegation is difficult when you think you are anointed. Delegation is dangerous when you serve under a dictator. Delegation is hard for somebody who thinks they are anointed. The Harvard Business Review published a quote uh, that I wanted to share with you. Here's what the Harvard Business Review said. A classic sign of insufficient delegation is that you are working long hours and feel totally indispensable while your team is passionately passive about being passe. In other words, you're the only one that cares. You're the only one that's invested. You're the only one who's going overtime. Jesus died for us, so why are you laying on a cross that you built? Nobody put you on that cross. You laid down on it. Jesus is the savior of the world. Hear this. He is omniscient. He knows everything. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is omnipotent. He has all power. Hear this. Jesus had all power and still had somebody else carry his cross. And here you are throwing your shoulder out, trying to hoist your cross by yourself when you know you don't have all power. Today, friends, I'm preaching to you um, a sermon I plagiarized. This sermon I didn't even write. This sermon does not come from chat AI. It comes from Moses' father-in-law, Jethro. He preached this sermon before I ever did. And when we are introduced to Jethro in Exodus, the second chapter, Moses is a fugitive of the law. He is a wanted, unconvicted felon for murdering an Egyptian in the desert. He worked 40 years under the protective custody of his uh, soon-to-be father-in-law, Jethro. While he's out there working for 40 years, people don't know, here it is, what he's working through and they don't know what he's working up against. I want to say to somebody, you got to keep working because you don't even understand that while you're working, God is working some things out in you. He's working some things out of you because there's a perfect work that he wants to do in you. Moses has an outstanding warrant for his arrest because he's committed murder. But even while it is that he is a wanted fugitive, he becomes so endeared to the family that Jethro allows Moses to marry his daughter Miriam. And while he's working on himself, God is working on a plan. I want somebody to say, well, not somebody, I want everybody to say it. I need you to lay hands on yourself and declare out loud, while I'm working on myself, God is working on a plan. Come on, say it again. While I'm working on myself, God is working on a plan. The Lord met him on a mountain and mandated that Moses, hear this, while being a fugitive, was going to be a mouthpiece that would liberate the children of Israel from Pharaoh. I'm not even talking to you right now. I'm talking to somebody behind you. You have no idea what God is going to use you to do. Stop disqualifying yourself when your disqualifications are actually your certification for God to be able to use you. 
Last Sunday, last Sunday after church, I, I went to a uh, black-owned restaurant called uh, Grits and Eggs right here in Atlanta. Went to a black-owned restaurant uh, called Grits and Eggs, and halfway through the meal, the executive chef and part, propri part proprietor, uh, Rasul York, came to my table and said, uh, Pastor, I hate to interrupt your breakfast, but do you mind if I testify? I said, Chef, testify. If you don't cook my food, I want to hear what you got to say. If there's something you need to confess, say it now before I finish. <laughs> I said, Pastor, I got to tell you, I've cooked for President Obama. I need you to know I'm president of the National Black Chef Association. I said, I want you to know I won Top Chef. I want you to know I won Chopped. I want you to know I've been on the Food Network. I want you to know that I mentor inner city kids to become chefs. I want you to know that I now have a restaurant with four locations. I want you to know that I can't even believe where God has me. Pastor, a whole lot of people don't know this, but the reason why I was convicted to come talk to you today is I saw you from the kitchen and I needed to give you my testimony that yes, I've cooked for Obama. Yes, I've won Top Chef. Yes, I've been on Chop. But in 2011, I was, quicken, I was cooking in jail. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I was cooking in myself. And God turned my life around and I can't believe what God has done. I said, Rasul, that's an amazing testimony. Thank you for sharing it with me, but I got to ask you a question. He said, yes, pastor, what's your question? I said, tell me, where do you go to church? He said, pastor, I got to be honest with you. I got four locations. I got four restaurants. I've got a staff of over 65 people. It's hard for me to make it to church because I'm trying to run my business. I said to him, Rasul, did you tell me that God brought you out of jail? Did you tell me that God got you cooking for presidents? Did you tell me even with blemishes on your record, God allowed you to open up four different locations? I said, Russell, don't you get so busy that you can't give God the glory for what God has done for you. I better pause right here. I know y'all got a whole lot of stuff that you got going on. I know you dealing with a lot, but don't you get so puffed up in your accomplishments and in your schedule that you ain't got time to give Give God glory. This is a good time for a praise break. Can you give God glory for where God has brought you and for how God has made a way? There, 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 there is somebody watching online right now who has allowed your work schedule to become so consumed and so busy that now God no longer fits in your schedule. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. I'm telling you, when you make God first in your life, God will make everything else easy. I got some witnesses in here. You cannot make God a back burner or a backup dancer. Do not make God a side chick or a jump off. But early in the morning will I seek him. I, I want to talk to him before I talk to anybody else. Before I scroll through Instagram or TikTok. Before I read my text messages. I want to say, Lord, thank you. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. You have to make God your priority. As a consequence, you got to make sure Sunday mornings I'm in church. Tuesday night I'm in Bible study. With everything else that I got to do, I've got to make God a priority in my life. When uh, Moses uh, uh, finds himself uh, by a mountainside, he hears the voice of God. And God starts talking to him. And says, Moses, I want to I use you. I want to use you when I know you on the run. I want to use you even though I know you got blood on your hands. I want to use you even though you got an anger management issue. I want to use you even after you killed somebody. And after God called Moses, Moses' life forever changed. 
and he becomes the great mouthpiece and oracle and uh, the, the uh, liberator and the civil rights activist that God needed for the children of Israel. And many years have passed by. Years have passed by and Moses finally reunites with Jethro. And when he reunites with Jethro, he tells him how the Lord used him. He said, Jethro, you ain't going to believe it. Is the Lord used somebody as broken as me to stop plagues? God used somebody like me to part the Red Sea. God used somebody like me to send Uber Eats to the desert. He used somebody like me to bring water out of a rock. I'm telling you, don't you dare sit on your testimony like God ain't never used you to do something great. Folk cannot treat you any kind of regular way. You are extraordinary. If they don't believe you, don't judge me by my clothes or my car or my career. Judge me on my testimony. That I'm able to say, look at me. I'm a testimony. I, I, that's why you can't tell everybody what you've been through because everybody can't handle it because you don't look like your testimony. You, you came out of the fire, but you don't smell like smoke because of the grace of God that's on your life. But I wanted you to see something of that preachers long before me have ignored that commentators have not paid attention to, or that theologians did not think it warranted any explanation, but I needed you to pay attention and to hone in on Exodus chapter 18, verse number 2. And in Exodus chapter 18, verse number 2, uh, it is uh, something that is absolutely mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing because what I found in Exodus 18, verse number 2, y'all ain't going to believe it, is Moses is anointed. And Moses is called by God. Moses is being used. Moses is performing miracles. Watch this. And Moses is separated from his wife. I'm, I'm in Exodus 18, verse number two. They, they didn't talk about this in vacation Bible school. Uh, is he's busy delivering all these people and is losing his family. The Bible says Moses sends his wife away and the children because he's so busy being a liberator. I, I, I got to have a transparent moment with you. I got to have a transparent moment with you. I lost my family not just through infidelity, but I lost my family on the altar of ministry with a misplaced priority. My first call is not to new birth. My first call is to my family. And it matters nothing if I preach to thousands of people all over the world and my family can't see the glory of God on my life. Some of you are losing your family because you're so filled with religion that you ain't relatable to the people that are in your house. Your children don't believe your witness. Your spouse don't believe your testimony. It ain't that much Holy Ghost in you that you can't speak to your wife. You ain't got that much fire on your life that you don't know how to be respectable to your offspring. He mismanaged home raising a nation. God, y'all don't like this here. You got to make up in your mind. I know you're busy. I know you're making money. I know you're making moves. I know you're rising and grinding. But you got to make up in your mind. My family is my priority. You can die on your job on Monday and they will post for your replacement on Tuesday. You better get your family as a priority. John Kennedy. John Kennedy, when he was president, told the Secret Service, I don't care what meeting I'm in. If my kids need to see me, let them come in. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm telling you, your kids will not remember gifts. Your kids will remember time. 
your commission can't compensate for your spouse's companionship. You got to get your house under holy authority. Adam only had one member and lost his wife to a snake. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You got to make up in your mind, God, before I get the corner office, before I pray for six figures, before I go to a new house, let my whole family be saved. Let everybody in my house see my witness and give your glory. I know all of y'all want to ball till you fall, but if you want to see your whole family walking in the alignment of the Holy Ghost, would you give God glory for it right now? I got the wrong church. You don't want to see your family say, it don't matter to you what happened to your son or what happens to your daughter. You got to get your family in order. And to show you Moses' dysfunction, to show you Moses' dysfunction, I needed you to see something, is that uh, he'd been busy parting Red Seas. He'd been busy build, building uh, a bridge to the promised land. And Jethro, his father-in-law, I need you to read the Bible, his father-in-law brings his wife and kids to see him. He's so busy being a liberator, so busy being uh, a leader, um, that he finally reconnects with his kids and uh, sees his wife after an extended separation. And I want you to see the broken dysfunction of somebody anointed like Moses. He finally gets to see his wife and his kids. And what does Moses do? He goes to work. He doesn't spend time to find out what's going on with his daughter. Who's she dating? Got no idea what's happening with his son. Who is he hanging out with? What, what are his habits? What is his proclivities? What is his desire? What is his life goals? He don't spend, hear this, not one night with his wife. Rekindling intimacy. Finding where is their connection. But as soon as the wife and the kids come back home, watch what happens. He then goes to the city square and two million people under his leadership are sitting all day waiting for an appointment. They're waiting for an appointment and his father-in-law is looking in the corner how he ain't playing football with his son. He's not giving any admonition to his daughter on what kind of men to look out for and what her trap she's got to sidestep. He's spending all his day curating kingdom business. And his father-in-law says to him, what you are doing is out of order. It ain't good. You are burning yourself out. It's too heavy for you. And I don't know who I'm preaching to today. I know not many of y'all going to shout over this message. But somebody, God told me to tell you, what you are doing ain't good. I know you're making more money. I know the business is going in the direction that you want. I know the contracts are starting to come in. I know that you're networking. But what you are doing ain't good. It says if you keep doing this, this way, you're going to burn yourself out. You are about to hit a wall. You are about to run out of gas. You are already spent. You are already tapped out. You are already scraping the bottom. You need somebody in your life who can love you enough to pull you up to tell you you got to pull over for a minute. You got to take some time for yourself. This ain't even who you are. And I know you trying to keep a straight face, but I feel like I'm talking to 500 of y'all who have hit a brick wall and you know in your heart of heart, I can't keep doing this. And keep doing this. I'm burning the candle on both ends. I ain't got nothing left. I'm going to bed thinking about work. I'm waking up responding to text messages. I ain't got nothing left because I'm frustrated on the job. I'm taking it out on my kids. 
I ain't got nothing left. I ain't even got a spouse. I now got a roommate. God, you're going to have to do something. I don't even know how we coexisting in this space. We barely even speak. We don't even make eye contact. Her foot don't even touch my foot no more. God, I need you to be able to do something. And God says, I'm going to do something. But the first thing you got to do is acknowledge that I can't keep living the way I've been living because this is not healthy for where I need to be. If I'm talking to somebody in this room, just blink at me twice because God says, I ain't gonna let you burn yourself out you got no idea why you came to church today is I need to give you a refill so that you can go back with greater focus and understanding that this is not my life paying bills and going to work and answering email but God said I don't want you to have a regular life I want you to have life more abundant Jethro said to Moses, you can't keep doing this. I don't need you to look at your neighbor. I don't need you to turn at them. It ain't none of their business. I'm but if I'm talking to you and you are convicted and you are challenged, I need you to just shout out loud. I can't keep doing this by myself. Jethro told Moses in verse 21, there are some capable people in the camp. He didn't say there are lawyers in the camp. He didn't say that there are judges in the camp. He said, I have put people around you. They may not have degrees or tenure, but I have put some people around you. And don't ask what school they went to. Don't ask them where they pledged. Don't ask them, do they have an Ivy League education? He said, this is how you're going to know they are my people for your life. He said, you're going to know they are the people I have assigned you. Here it is, when they fear God. Oh, it, it done got crazy right through here. And it's a whole lot of people that come to church, but it ain't that many people that still fear God. I need to know how you get in God's presence and you're still arrogant and still puffed up and still got pride. Where are those that fear God? Also, know that I can't live any kind of raggedy lifestyle. That I've got to have some honor and have some integrity. He said, I'm going to raise up some people that will pray for you when you ain't got the strength to pray for yourself. I'm putting people in your life who will check you when you are out of order and remind you God expects more for you than where it is that you are. He says, I got to put people around you who fear God. I got to put people around you who got integrity. You ain't got to worry about them trying to steal money or take away your clients or break your, your business in half. You need some integrous people in your life. He said, I'm sending people that are going to help you, who are going to help you achieve what it is that you were born to do. Everybody ain't jealous of you. Everybody ain't in competition with you. Everybody ain't threatened by you. But God told me to tell you, I sent some folk who you don't even know pray for you when you don't even know you need prayer. There's some folk that are cheering for you who are not jealous of what God is getting ready to do. You would think you would think, um, you would actually think I was preaching to you. I'm not. I don't even know why you thought this word was for you. Look at you with your self-absorbed self. This sermon ain't got nothing to do with you. God preached this to me said, Jamal, you are getting ready to burn out. I done put an incredible anointing on your life and a vision that is so much further than you. But if you try to carry all of this by yourself, there's no way you're going to get it accomplished. But I'm raising up some people around you 
who see the vision and they not there just for the show but they understand pastor I got it you you ain't got to do all of this by yourself must, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free no there's a cross for everyone and I'm telling you there's a cross for you as well you may be seated, my time is almost up. It's, do you know how tiring it is to have to do everything? To have to do everybody's job? Do you know how wearying it is when folk only do the minimum but they want to be paid at the maximum? Do, do you know how draining it is to have to over explain and then they get offended at correction? Do, do you know what it feels like to have a passion to get something done but they got a spirit of procrastination and they don't care how it gets handled? Do you know what it's like to have a spirit of excellence but you got folk around you who are comfortable with mediocrity but God said watch what I'm getting ready to do I'm gonna raise up some people that's gonna help you get it off the ground some people that got my heart and got my vision and got my passion and got my ear you may be seated I'm, I'm almost finished hallelujah the hardest thing for strong people to ever do, the hardest thing for strong people to ever do is to admit I need help. Because we've been made to think that asking for help is weakness. But you don't even understand that when you ask for help, it's a sign of how strong you are. That you see that what you are called to do is so much bigger than you. But you need somebody who's going to help push you through it. I need somebody to shout, it's bigger than me. And I want to tell you that what I am declaring over your life is not for something that's going to happen by the end of the year. But God said, this week I'm going to give you evidence that I'm raising up people around you who are going to help you get to the top. He's raising up somebody around you. Hear this, who was called, I better say it another way. They were born to assist you. That their assignment in this life is to help you perform what it is that God has for you. I can't do it. I can't do it by myself. It's too heavy. It's too much. It's too stressful. It's too expensive. I don't have the expertise in every area, but I got a vision for what it's supposed to look like. God said, take your hand off the wheel and watch me raise up some people. Hear this, because I need you to make sure that your family is healthy, that your marriage is strong, that your children are balanced. So I'm going to let you ride in the back because you're going to have a competent team who's going to ride in front of you. Hear this, and they're not going to try to steal the business from you, but they're just going to stay in position until you get your strength back together. And Jethro says to Moses, I'm going to raise up judges who are in the camp, and they're going to help you preside. And Moses, that doesn't mean that you're any less anointed. I'm just going to make you more effective because I'm going to call some gifts in them that they don't even know that they have. Here it is. They are anointed, but they'll never be the spokesperson. They are anointed and they may never meet Pharaoh. But their greatest delight is knowing I'm a part of a team that is going to set people free. Do you know if you are sitting in this room today, you ain't no regular anybody. But God is getting ready to pull out an anointing in your life that is going to turn this ministry upside down. The devil was hoping you were never going to say it because the con 
no ears, it sounds arrogant. But I need somebody who's in the alignment of the Holy Ghost. Would you shout out loud, this church needs me. This ministry needs me. My pastor needs me. And all I need is some help. All I need is some help. That's all I need is some help. I I went to Morehouse. I went to Duke. I went to Oxford. I need some help. I'm a third generation preacher, but I need some help. God knows I got vision oozing out of my pores, but I need some help. And I don't know what you came to do, but I need somebody who can help me lift him up. Because he said, if two or three are gathered together in my name, then there I will be also. Look at the person beside you and tell them, can I be honest with you? I'm a little tired. I'm a little burnt out. I'm a little fatigued. And I just need a little help. Look at him and tell him, I got you. When I give God glory, I'm not going to shout for me. I'm shouting because I want to help you out. I can't hear nobody. Would you do me a favor? You don't even know how much strength you're getting ready to give them. For one minute, would you give God glory for the people who are sitting on your row? They need your help. They need your help. They need your help. You lift up that hand. I'm finished. I'm just not through. Lift up that hand for me, please. I need some help. I need some help. I can't do all of this. People don't know that you're juggling chainsaws. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I didn't crash, but I refused to burn. I know the Holy Ghost is with me because I'm not drunk right now. I know God is with me because I'm not high under a bridge right now. I know God must be fighting for me because I haven't sought out revenge by now. God said, watch me. Watch me help you. And I'm getting ready to send humans to do it. I'm getting ready to send people into your life. It's going to cover you in an incredible way. How would you lift up that hand for me, please? I'm praying for God to send you help. Hallelujah. I need help. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It ain't my mother, it ain't my father. It's it's me, oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Hallelujah. Lift up that hand. Open up your mouth for just 10 seconds, please. Hallelujah. Help is on the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reaches. Come on, both hands. You are my strength.
you. Stretch your right hand of faith towards this altar. Bring this young lady to me, please. Bring her to me. Bring her to me. Yes. Hallelujah. No, just give me your hand. Just give, just give me your hand. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 If y'all are step two, take two steps away from her. If you, hallelujah. 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 Listen to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Shh. Listen to me. Sometimes you need help and it ain't with your business. It ain't with your marriage. Sometimes you need help fighting your demons. Hallelujah. You don't have to go through spiritual warfare by yourself. Hallelujah. 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 I break every demonic stronghold. Every demon from the pit of hell, when there's a scream in this room, every satanic principality is getting ready to be broken. I need, without any music, I need to hear the sound of a worshiper. Would you open up your mouth? Come on, I can't hear you. Open up your mouth. I need you to open up your mouth. Thank you, Holy God. Come on, open up your mouth. Thank you, Holy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I cancel the spirit of witchcraft. Every demonic entity that has illegally come into this building, you are served eviction. Every demon that has invaded the body of your son, the body of your daughter, not by tomorrow, by 12 noon, I cast it out of the very pit of hell. Let God arrive. Ha. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Lift up that hand right where you are. Lift up that hand right where you are. Hallelujah. Thank you. Ha! Thank you, Holy God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all came to play church. Hallelujah. I dare you to lay hands right on your womb right there. Open up your mouth and just travail for it. Come on, I need you to cry for it. Cry for it. Come on, cry for it. Hallelujah. Come right here. Come right here. Lift up both of those hands. Lift up both of those hands. Hallelujah. Bring me the oil. Hallelujah. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not playing with the mic. I'm breaking chains. Hey. Every chain that was on your mother, every chain that was on your nasty uncle, I break the trauma of molestation. I break the trauma of a rape at 16. I break the trauma of a confliction of identity. Satan! Lift up that hand. Open up your mouth. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Holy God. Hallelujah. Ma'am, come here. Ma'am, come here. Come here. Lift up that hand, please. Tell me your name. Tell me your name. Tell me your name. Just tell me your name. Tell me the name that's on your birth certificate. Kazia. Yes. Yes. Yes, thank you. Back up for me. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lift up that hand as high as you can. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. Bless your holy name. Thank you, holy name. Bless your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Lift up that hand right where you are. Hallelujah. 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 With that hand lifted, open up your mouth. Let me just hear the sound of worship. Hallelujah. Let me just hear the sound of worship. Hallelujah. Let me hear the sound of worship. Hallelujah. Let me hear the sound of worship. Thank you. Hallelujah. The sound of worship. I need you all to back up. Just take two steps back for me, please. Two steps back for me, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless that holy name. Lift that hand high for me, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel this glory. Hallelujah. I feel this glory. Hallelujah. Jonathan, he is Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. Lift up that hand. He is Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth. You are Alpha. Oh my God. And oh, we worship. We give him glory. We give him glory. We
music, with no music, listen to me. Uh, this is uh, going to be a place of healing, a place of restoration, a place of wholeness. God, show me a vision of people flying here from around the world to get healed. That in this place, people are going to recover hearing and people are going to be able to regain the capacity to walk. People are going to be set free from demonic strongholds. But I need your help. I need you to help me lift the name of Jesus. Listen to me. In maturity so that this does not become entertainment. I don't want you to have in mind that this is a show or this is a performance. It is a demonstration of the power of God has nothing to do with Jamal Bryant. The power of God is in this place. I'm going to sing it again. Listen to me. I'm going to sing it again, but with no music, God yearns to hear our voice. He yearns to hear our worship. He yearns to hear our praise. And so every person collectively, there is no praise team. We're just one sound to the glory of God. I want everybody, come on. You are Alpha. Come on. And oh, we worship you, Lord, for you are, you are worthy to be praised. Let's start it over. You are. Come on, would you give it to him? And all we worship you, our Lord. For you are, you are worthy to be praised. We give, we give. lifted hallelujah that hand is lifted hallelujah I'm not talking about cancer or tumors or heart disease in this moment you're being healed from burnout God you get ready to get your fire back you're about to get your passion back you're about to get your drive back I'm telling you, you can may feel a warm sensation hit your body. Not because anybody played with the temperature, but the spirit of the living God is getting ready to rest on you in this moment. And you ain't got time to be worried about what other people think. Would you just in an explosive way, would you give God your best shout right there? Hey. Come on, I said give him. Give him your best shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may go back to your seats. Softly, musicians, let me just hear strings. Softly, you may go back to your seats. Hallelujah. You may go back to your seats. Hallelujah. Help me, Sister Winners. Thank you. You all take her into the prayer room. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Bless you. Let me hear strings, please, right there. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Bless his name. All praises be to the King of Kings. for just one moment I want caregivers to stand caregivers I need you standing every other person be seated caregivers I need you standing those of you who are online wave your hand on me hallelujah would you lift up that hand caregivers caregivers to aging parents caregivers to special needs children caregivers here it is from somebody who's going through physical rehab, occupational therapy, caregivers, I need you standing. I want you to know that at three this morning, God heard your prayer. That you can't do this by yourself. God, I can't hear nobody. You try not to complain, but God says, I'm getting ready to send you help. God, I can't hear nobody. Five people are getting ready to scream. I hope y'all don't miss it. God says, while you worship, I am convicting your siblings to do more. God, I can't hear nobody that you ain't going to do this by yourself. But I'm going to raise up for you the support and the help that you need. He said, if you open up your mouth, I'm getting ready to give you the finances that are necessary. That even if I got to send somebody in twice a week, but this battle is not yours. I'm waiting on a sound in the atmosphere. This battle is not yours. This battle is the Lord's. Somebody open up your mouth like you know God is able. Hallelujah. They can come with me. You're the only one I got. Lift up that hand for me. Only the caregivers, I need you standing. Everybody else is seated. Just the caregivers, I need you standing. Hallelujah. I'm here to announce to you that help is on the way. Hallelujah. I said help is on the way. What is amazing, what is amazing is you have been giving care while you've been sick. You've been giving care while your body has not been functioning. But God says, I'm getting ready to give you strength you didn't even know you needed. I speak a double portion of strength over your life. That the grace of God is getting ready to meet you right there. I need 10 people who know that late in the midnight hour, God is getting ready to turn it around for you. Would you open up your mouth like you know God is able to do it? He's giving strength to caregivers. He's giving strength to caregivers. Hallelujah. Blessed holy name. I need that hand lifted right where you are. Hallelujah. You all help this young man get to the aisle. Help this young man get to the aisle. Help him get to the aisle. Hallelujah. Help this young man get to the aisle, please. Hallelujah. Help him get to the aisle. Hallelujah. Help him get to the aisle. Hallelujah. 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 Stay right there. 
Lift him up for me. Thank you. Stay right there. Look at me. Look at me. Lift up that hand, please. Lift up, lift up both of his hands for me. Hallelujah. How, tell me his name. You know him? Huh? Eric. Yes, lift. Derek. Yes, thank you. Derek, look at me, please. Hallelujah. Lift up both of those hands. You can do it by yourself. Lift up both of those hands. Lift up those hands. Thank you. Hallelujah. I came to talk to a runaway preacher. Listen to me. You were called when you were 12. Hallelujah. What I am saying to you ain't even from me. Listen to me. I am talking to you on behalf of your grandmother. That the voice that's in your body is not going to lie dormant. But I speak breakthrough and deliverance. I need somebody to open up your mouth. I need somebody to shout out loud. Come on, I dare you to scream. I dare you to give him glory. I dare you to yell out loud. God is going to show himself strong. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. That's it. Come on. That's what I'm looking for. Come on. Come on, I need to hear new birth. Where are you? Come on. I love you forever. Come on, wave that hand for me. Come on, I love you. I love you. Would you clap your hands right where you are? Come on, I said clap your hands. Clap till your hand turns red. Hallelujah. God is doing a new thing in this place. He's doing a new thing in your life. He's doing a new thing even in your pastor. I, um, hallelujah. I feel like we're getting ready to walk into something. I feel like a page has just turned. I feel like a new beginning has just opened up. That's, that's what I hear right now. Heaven is open right now. Did y'all hear what I just said? Heaven is open right now. Whatever you are asking God for, you better ask it right now. Heaven is open. door is opening in heaven I want to do this if I can I want to do this I want to uh, I, I want to give God tribute for what he has already done and for where he's taking us and for the way that he's getting ready to make 
uh, I want us to uh, invest in this new move of God, this chapter of our being, chapter of our lives. Servant leaders, our ushers, partner with me right quick, if you will. Amen. You've heard uh, today uh, from a young man, 23 years of age, 23 years of age, running a multi-million dollar business with no degree. I'm telling you, God is able. Did y'all hear what I just said? God is able. With no uh, direction from his pastor, I never told that young man to tithe 15%. I never in my life, since y'all been here, did I ever ask you for 15%? He said, that's what God told him to do because he understood that he could not do the bare minimum but needed to exceed uh, his level of giving. I want all of us in a posture to give, in a position to give. All of us need to do that. I want, if uh, you're absent of an envelope, I need you to lift up that hand. I want 100% participation. I want everybody sowing. I want everybody giving. I want everybody sharing. I'm thankful I want you to... Uh, Celebrate with me 100 people are being baptized today. Somebody give God glory. They're setting up uh, in the lobby today. When you go out uh, into uh, uh, the lobby, you'll see uh, baptismal pools, and uh, I want you to pray for them as they make this uh, incredible nuanced step uh, in uh, the kingdom of God. Uh, every person ought to be sharing. Every person ought to be sowing. Uh, we learn from a 23-year-old, don't give God your bare minimum uh, because God always blesses us lavishly. He blesses us excessively. Uh, that's the kind of God that he is. He uh, uh, tells us that I'm going to do exceedingly. I'm going to do abundantly. I'm going to go beyond what you can think, what you can dream, and what you can imagine. Uh, and so I want that to be reflective and evidenced in your giving that I'm going to go exceed what I have ordinarily done. I'm going to go beyond what I have ordinarily done. I want to do it. Those of you who are online, whatever it is that you do, uh, don't miss this move of God But because I'm telling you uh, the spirit of God is palatable in this place. I can feel it. I'm telling you, am I the only one? Anybody else feel the weight of glory in this place? Hallelujah, the weight of glory is in this place. I, I want every person, every person, uh, make sure that you have an envelope. Every person is poised and positioned to give. Every person is doing it. Amen. Th this morning, uh, people started sowing uh, seeds this morning from literally uh, around the world. I am uh, flying out uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm going to Baltimore. The church I started is turning 24 on tomorrow, turning 24 uh, on tomorrow, Empowerment Temple. I am so grateful. I, I had no idea, I had no idea uh, that they were training me to be your pastor. I had no idea they were training me. They were equipping me. Uh, wherever it is that you are now, don't assume it's your last stop. Uh, don't assume that this is all that God has for you. Do not assume, here it is, that this is the optimum of where it is that you're going to go. God's got a whole nother level. He's got a whole nother position. He's got brand new territory, and you are getting ready to occupy it. Uh, every person, I pray that to, uh, your faith has been stretched, that God is showing you a sign of what is uh, to come. Uh, now that uh, our media ministry has partnered with us, if you're going to give... Uh, on uh, virtually through Zelle, text to give, or Givelify, push pay, uh, or even if you're writing a check, every person, would you lift up, uh, lift up your hand right where it is that you are? You're giving by phone. I want you to do it on that wise. New birth, I pray that uh, uh, in ingenuity, there will be flexibility. In ingenuity, there will be flexibility. Uh, as a consequence, I want to do something different. Uh, I am not uh, going to put the basket up uh, for you to come today. I'm not going to do that. Uh, let's just do it all right where it is uh, that we stand. Let's just get it from where it is that we are. Lift up that phone if that's how you're giving. Lift up that envelope if that's how it is uh, that you're sharing. Karen, see, lift that up. Amen. Repeat after me. Lord, thank you 
for the sign you have already shown me. This week, perform a wonder because of the seed that I am sowing. I expect it, I believe it, and I stand on it. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord. Servant leaders, would you partner with me? They're going to be moving uh, throughout uh, this sanctuary to receive your giving. Those of you who are online, I so desperately want you to partner with what it is that God is uh, calling uh, for us to do. I am asking you, listen to me, I'm asking nobody to leave, nobody to move. I need everybody to stay in uh, your rightful position. Uh, let me say just a, a couple of things uh, because I still need to open the doors of the church. Uh, on Tuesday, we're going to flow into part two of this message. I need you right in this exact same spot, where it is that you are. I need you back, but we're going to be in the NPR on Tuesday. I want you to invite two people with you. Uh, I am just for the month of April, just for the month of April, uh, we're going to be in the NPR uh, studio, uh, and I want it packed and jammed from the window to the wall. Amen. We are mega church. They got a storefront feeling. Amen. So I need you to please uh, meet me in the NPR Tuesday at uh, 730. I am overwhelmingly uh, delighted and I am humbled uh, that on uh, Thursday we'll be hosting the debate uh, for uh, DeKalb County CEO and it'll be broadcast live on uh, channel 2. Make sure that you do that. Our young people who have not uh, yet registered for our summer camp ask that you will please register for our catapult uh, summer camp tomorrow night. All the men make some noise. All the men make some noise. Tomorrow night at 7.30, uh, Brother Pastor uh, Cavance Ross is going to be in the locker room with all of our men at 7.30. Make sure that you are present and accounted for. I'm so excited. Here it is because we are equipped and we are now empowered. Uh, somebody, I better say it a different way, some people are about to get saved. Some people are about to join this church. Some people who can help me build the vision God is getting ready to send down this aisle. Marvin Sapp sings a song that says praise him in advance. Would you praise God for the people that are about to get saved? Come on, praise him for the people that are about to join the church. Now, I want everybody standing. I want everybody standing. I want everybody standing. Listen. All this power that has happened today, I'm telling you from the top to the bottom, the Holy Ghost been all up and through here. Amen. If you're here today and you're saying, Pastor, I'm going to be a part of a church where signs and wonders still happen. I want to be a part of a church where I can feel a part, where I can feel included, where I can help build, I can make a difference, I can make an impact. If that's where you are, if that's where you are, I want you to come meet your pastor at this altar. Wherever it is that you are, you need to join the church. You need to become a part of this ministry. I need you to come, and I want you to come with all deliberate intentionality. Would you come right now, wherever it is that you find yourself? Come on, clap your hands. Make her feel welcome. Are y'all going to shout for this beautiful family coming? God bless you. Come on, clap your hands. Here they come. Bless his name. They're still coming. Come on, here they come. Glory to God forever. Here they come. Come on, clap your hands. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. All right, listen. All right, that was the first wave, but you know some people are going to play hard to get. They know they want to be with us. They know they want to roll with us. They just need a nudge. They just need somebody to talk to them. 
Uh, everybody in this room, everybody help me. Part of our responsibility is to bring people in, to lift people up, and to pull the power down. I need you to do me a favor. Help me bring some people in. Would you talk to two people around you who are not saved? Find two people around you. I'm sorry, who you don't know. You don't know whether they saved or not. Ask them. Come on, clap your hands. Look at this harvest coming. I'm so grateful. I'm so appreciative. Are y'all shouting for these young people coming? Are y'all going to shout for these friends coming? Y'all didn't believe this harvest was going to be this heavy. That's his name. Hallelujah. They still coming and y'all ain't clapping. Come on, bring your puppy to get saved. Come on. Amen. Yes, thank you. Amen. I need you very quickly. I I'm grateful for all of those who have come to the altar, uh, but I got an itchy suspicion that some men can get saved today. Some brothers can find Jesus today. Some young people can at the risk of getting on somebody's nerves. Would you talk to one last person and ask them, are they saved? One last person. Come on, give God some praise for this young lady coming. Beautiful. I'm grateful. Stretch your right hand to faith. Stretch your right hand to faith. Repeat after me, you're in the right place at the right time. Come on, here comes another young man. Y'all ain't excited? Come on. Stretch your right hand to faith. Listen, if you're here and you're not saved, would you just hurry up? Come on now, we tired of playing with you. If you're in this room and you know you need a church home, would you kindly come? I need you to come. Shut your right hand to faith. Repeat after me. You're in the right place at the right time. Joining the only church. Serving the right God. Come on, here they come. Somebody give God glory for them. Shut your right hand to faith. Let's take it from the top. They still keep coming. I hear a sound. I hear a sound, they must be coming. I hear a sound, they must be coming. Stretch your right hand to faith. Let's try it one more again. Repeat after me. You're in the right place at the right time. Joining the right church. Serving the only God. And I know that's right. If you know I'm right, would you give God some glory even now? This way. Amen. Ask that you'll please follow us this way. New birth, give it up for our family members. Would y'all come this way? Come on, y'all ain't shouting good. Y'all ain't shouting good. Pastor Stokes, help me. We got some other guests that are visiting on today and directives you may be seated for just one moment you may be seated. yes sir did you enjoy the message today i can't do it by myself are we going to help our pastor and help new birth in the body of christ to show the greatness of the kingdom well we have a, a ministry fair coming up on may 5th so you'll be able to sign up for ministries there are lots of announcements that you'll see if you scan the QR code that's on the back of your seat and you'll find all the events that are going on at the church, there's so much happening here at New Birth. We can't tell it all at one time, but please visit the website, newbirth.org and look for the events and you'll find everything that's happening here at New Birth. And today after service, we have something so special in the lobby. We have, as Pastor said, a hundred people who have given their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ who will be baptized in the name of the Lord. 
and family, we want to celebrate with them. So we'll ask that you would, at the benediction, go to the lobby and let's experience this new life in Christ with our brothers and sisters. We have something for our children all the time here at New Birth. And if you have school-aged children, ages 5 to 12, this summer, the Catapult Summer Camp will be happening. You're going to be able to get those kids out of the house and let them have some fun. And we want you to sign up. Registration is open now for the Catapult Summer Camp. We also have something for our high schoolers. Everyone who's graduating from high school and are planning to go to college, scholarships are available from right here at New Birth. Please, please go ahead and apply. You never know what you're going to get. And if you don't apply, you won't get it at all. So please apply now for the scholarships. We have at New Birth a wonderful exhibit that is a standing exhibit in our African Textile Museum. We are so honored that God would choose New Birth to plant this museum right here. The African Textile Museum is open Thursdays through Sundays, and you can go today after service and visit it. I've been there three times and I'm going again. It is that fantastic. Please make sure that you take advantage of what God has placed right here in our midst. We have our groundbreaking that's going to be on May 4th as we open up the ground for the many homes that will be planted right here at New Birth. Please be with us for that groundbreaking ceremony. Mark it on your calendar the first Saturday of May. On this Thursday, uh, something that will resonate around our area, around our community, we are having right here a debate with the candidates who want to be the next CEO of DeKalb County. How many DeKalb County residents are here? Lift your hand. You need to be here Thursday night. If you live, work, play, or worship in DeKalb County, come and hear what the three candidates have in mind so that we know how they stand on the issues. It'll be right here at 7 p.m. There's limited seating. You must register. Please go on the website, register so that you can be here. We want to hear what they're saying. Today we have special guests that are with us uh, running for seats in office, and I believe one of them is still here. Iris Hamilton, are you here? There she is. She's running for Georgia State Senate, District 55. So let's uh, acknowledge her. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today, and we pray that the Lord's blessing be upon you always. Amen. Thank you all, New Birth, for everything that you do all the time. Together, we are better in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. New birth, will you stand to your feet? Will you hug somebody next to you? Tell them God does what he want to do. He's on his own time clock. Tell somebody, but it was worth the wait. Hallelujah. Hug the other person next to you. Tell them I'm praying for you. I'm rooting for you this week. Hallelujah. Just grab that person's hand. Make sure that you plan to be back here on Tuesday night for group therapy. How many of you were blessed by the service this morning? Lord, something happens when God does what he wants to do. Our prayer is that the Father will do what he want to do in your life this week. Hallelujah. Squeeze that hand as we get ready to leave this place. We know that we leave here, but it is not from his presence and not from his sight. Father, we thank you. Thank you that you are the living God. And we thank you that your manifested presence was dwelling with us today. Now, Father, we are grateful that you never leave us. You never forsake us. You go ahead of us, Father, and you make our way clear. God, as we leave from this place, we thank you that not one word has fallen to the ground, but we thank you, Father, that we will see your word at work in our life this week, God. We thank you for miracle signs and wonders. We thank you for supernatural deliverance even in our home, Father. We thank you for oil that that flows from the top down.
around God and we plan to experience it in our life. God bless our brother and sister. We thank you for unexpected calls this week. We thank you for divine yeses and approvals this week. We thank you, God, for clearance and all that you are doing in our life. We thank you that while we are calling on you, Father, you have already answered. And we thank you, God, that by Tuesday, our testimony will be, and he did it for me again. And he did it for me again. We love you and we honor you. We are grateful for this place at New Birth. Whether we are in the building or we are online, Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. And everything that you do is beautiful and marvelous in our sight. If you believe that, squeeze that hand. Tell him you love him one more time. And we will see you right back in this place on Tuesday evening.